question Don asked, which is how do you actually train customer service? Now, I wondered how I was going to open this talk today, and I think the best way for me to open this talk today is to tell you I am a complete maverick, um, and I'm an imposter here. Because number one is, I don't think customer service is the point, and I'm not a trainer. Okay? <laughs> um, I would say to you that customer behavior is the point. You can give fantastic customer service to someone, but if they don't come back, they don't tell their friends about you, they don't buy more, they don't refer you, they don't spread your good reputation, you might as well have given them poor rep service. Okay? It's not about service, it's about behavior. It's about loyalty, it's about reputation, it's about results. So, how do you train customer service? And I, I do apologize for saying this. I would say that you don't. Because you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You can't make it drink. What happens if you take that horse to water and try and force its head into the trough? Say, drink, it's good for you. What does the horse do? Pulls the horse, pulls the head out. It doesn't matter how thirsty it is, it will resist. Okay. So I would say to you, how do you train customer service? You put a system in place that makes people want to learn it, and then you make the water available. Okay? We'll talk about that. I'll come to it in a, in a minute. Okay. What I was going to talk about, what is the point of customer service? Any thoughts? What's the point of customer service? Why are we here? What are we doing this for? What's the point? Any thoughts? Improve your business, okay? Improve your business. In what way? Um, I would think to increase your turnover. Increase turnover? Yep. <coughs> profit. Increase, increase profit. profit. Reduce costs. Make, make people will have a, a good experience and send everybody else to come back. To yep. Generate referrals. Improve, improve your reputation. Anything else? Yeah, and why would you want to do that? Yeah, people don't want to be miserable in their lives, do they? <laughs> Which always amazes me, amazes me why people watch the news. <coughs> why do you watch the news if you don't want to be miserable in your life? Don't watch the news, it's miserable. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah, so you want, you'll have good, happy people in your organisation who will then do what to your customers? Make your customers happy, who will then do what? Come back, refer you, etc., etc. Also, I'm just talking to Brian, you know, happy people in your business don't leave you. Reduces your, 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 uh, your recruitment costs, it reduces your HR costs. I don't know if anyone here is an HR at all. I worked for a FTSE 100 company, we didn't have an HR department. Bloody brilliant it was. The manager is responsible for managing the people, not the HR department. Okay. Now, um, the, so the point of customer service is to generate results. Would that be fair enough? Doesn't matter what your results. You may not be a, um, a profit company. You may be a public organisation. You may be a charity. Um, I work with quite a number of, of government organisations. Yeah. Making more profit doesn't make any sense to them. <laughs> but it's all about getting better results. So the point of customer service is to get better results. Would that be fair? Okay. So the question is, how do you do that? And it links into the point you made, Don. How do you actually train this stuff? How do you make it work? Okay. A little bit about me, first of all, before I go into this. My background is in pubs and hotels. Um, I um, had an interesting 20 years buying bankrupt pubs and hotels, turning them around and selling them on. That was far too much like hard work. Um, luckily, I got myself into a position where I didn't have to do it anymore. And I was working for a big pub company um, in Birmingham. One of this FTSE 100 company, and I was in charge of customer service there, which is where I developed some of my strange views. And I had lots of people like me around because I wanted to. We had nine and a half thousand pubs, and I wanted to find a way that those pubs could deliver outstanding customer service to their customers, so both our businesses would grow. I had loads of people around like me around with lots of posh customer service training brochures and all sorts of powerpoints and all sorts of things, all wonderful. And I'd sat down, a very polite person, I listened to them, that's very good, yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely. End of the meeting, I just asked them one question. 
Any idea what that question might be? How successful the trade is. Yeah. How do you make it work? Yeah. Anyone can produce glossy brochures and train people to their blue in the face, but how do you make people actually do it? How do you make that horse drink? How many people, must have seen 20 different people, how many of those 20 could give me an immediate answer to that question, do you think? Not one. <laughs> How many of them did I employ? <laughs> Not one. I wrote it myself. Because if you don't get results, there's no point. Yeah? There's no, if you don't get results, there's no point in doing anything. The only purpose of doing all of this is to get results. So I, this, this sort of triggered a bit of a... <laughs> triggered a bit of a, of a, of a, of a waking up moment in me. I thought, actually, I can do some, do some work on this. This is interesting. I really like this. And I, I became a bit like I'm a younger version of Don Hales. I do it because I love it. <laughs> so I don't care what I say or who I upset. I don't care because I do it because I love it. And I passionately believe in what I'm saying. Okay? And please argue with me because I love it when we have, when we have constructive arguments because I always learn something. I've, you know, no one's ever thought of everything, have they? So get your questions ready and get your, your, your answers ready. Okay. So I, I left this business in 2006, just a little point. When I left, their shares were £7.80. Yesterday were £1.11. They actually went down to 30p within a year of me leaving. Nothing to do with me leaving, of course. But, <laughs> um, but the reason I left was I kept telling them, you're killing the goose that lays the golden egg. We had 9,500 pubs and we weren't treating the customers right. Because property was increasing every year, people were queuing up to take the pubs on, suddenly the whole thing went into reverse. No loyalty, no business there. The business collapsed. Okay? Unbelievable. So it's a good example of how not developing customer loyalty will collapse your businesses when times change. And hey, are we going into more turbulent waters or calmer waters in the future, do you think? much more turbulent. Living standards in this country are going to continue to drop for at least 20 years. We are absolutely screwed financially. We're only just a little bit better than Cyprus. Yeah? Customers are going to get more demanding. Revenues are going to fall. Spending is going to fall. You're going to have to be, excuse my French, shit hot to survive in the future. Okay? What's the traditional approach? Training, surveys, charters. Ever heard of the carrot and stick method? What's good about the carrot and stick method? It's sustainable. What's good about it though? Short it works while you're there with a carrot and stick. Yeah? Short term. It works while this guy's here. Yeah? What happens when he's not there? Forget it. Okay. I would suggest to you that this is the traditional approach to customer service training. Customer service in an organization. On top of that, we're going through a social revolution. Now, as I talk about social media, you mentioned it in your training course. Um, I produced a document called Social Media, Make Sales Rather Than Waste Your Time. 99% of stuff on social media is a total waste of time. But... We are going through a change. We are going through a massive revolution, probably in as large in scope as when the printing press was invented. We are right at the tip of it, right at the start. Absolutely in its infancy. Because for the first time, there is two-way global communication. And that won't st that's, that's it going forward. Okay? It's never happened before. The printing press was, for the first time, the invention of one-way mass communication. That was the change. It, it spurned the Industrial Revolution, the Reformation, the Renaissance, social revolution around the world. Massive changes. We are just beginning to see the tip of the massive changes that are going to be spur spawned by this social revolution we're seeing at the moment. Two-way global communication. We have a two-way local market. And nobody is safe. No business is safe at all. Okay, so what is the most successful antivirus software in the market? Avast. What's their marketing budget? 
zero. Why are they so popular? They're free and brilliant for the basic version. Okay? You then pay to raise the game if you want to. Okay? Now, if I mentioned to you 20 years ago, hey, the best way to sell your software is to let everyone have it free and be the best in the market anyway. And you were a software developer or a financial director, what would you say to me? <coughs> yeah, you're a complete idiot, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. This is a model of the future. This is what's going to happen. The whole of our, everything we're used to, everything's going to be turned on its head. We have two-way global communication. Marketing departments, forget it. Sales departments, forget it. Build your reputation through customer experience, but do it systematically. That's what I'm going to talk about. Okay? How did Google win the battle of search engines? Why didn't Yellow Pages win it? they didn't see it coming, they didn't see the changes in the market, they didn't think differently. Google won it on reputation. No marketing budget, reputation alone. Okay? And these examples are with us all over the place. The most famous one, obviously, is in the old days, Marks and Spencers, third biggest retailer in the world in 1990. They're pinnacle, the third biggest retailer in the world. Where are they today? And I spoke to the HR department of Marks and Spencers, and the lady said, we don't really need to do customer feedback because our customers will tell us when we've got it wrong. <laughs> Come on. You know, we've got to get better than that. Right. And I don't have a problem with saying that because that's in the open market. The customer has the world in its hands. It's going to turn every business upside down. I can employ an accountant in Romania for 200 quid a year. He'd probably do a pretty good job in my books. So why would I spend two grand in Exeter? where I live. I would at the moment, because I think it's worth the extra 1,800 quid. What about five years' time? Yeah? The traditional approach to business will not work. You cannot set up your business and then go, hey guys, let's also do some customer service training. It's not going to work. The only business that's going to work going forward is the business that makes the customer the heart of their business. And everything they do is designed to make that customer love you, come back, buy more, and tell their friends how fantastic you are and they'd be an idiot not to deal with you. It's the only thing that will work in this new market. And the way to deal with all of this is BOCS. Now, I have a copy here of my book. Haha, -ha, here it is. <laughs> Who'd like to tell me what BOCS means and get a copy of my book for free? Deal with the customer side. Oh, very good. You can have a CD for that one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So it's got a bit cracked and trailing the way up. I do apologise. But the CD is good inside. <laughs> No, very, very good. I like that, but it's not actually what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, I'll give you a clue. First, first word is blindingly. Obvious. Blindingly so obvious. No. Nope. You can have a CD for obvious. <laughs> <laughs> blindingly obvious, common sense. There you go. You've got a book already. I've got a book. Yeah. <laughs> Come to me afterwards and tell me why you need the book and I'll give it to you. Right. Um, we are going back to the bloody obvious. We started as hunter-gatherers. It's called survival of the fittest. We then moved to the agrarian society. Agrarian society is the local communities where everybody has their role and everybody helps everyone else out and people can't survive without each person doing their bit. We then went through the Industrial Revolution, back to hunter-gatherer. We've had 400 years of madness in our world. And the result of that madness has been bankruptcy and raped environment. It's not very sensible, is it? Half of the world are beasts, the other half starving. We're not a successful species. We've had 400 years of, 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 of development, ended up in bankruptcy and knackered world. It's a total disaster. However, we are heading back to common sense. We are heading back to 
global local communities. So the local community measure again, but globally. Okay? Customer, common sense, not customer service. <laughs> common sense is making a comeback. And thank goodness for that, because we all need it. And if we don't get it, we will destroy ourselves. Okay? What I'm going to talk to you about is a system based on common sense. Anyone heard of Ray Kroc? Yeah. Great guy. Have you read his book? And not only did I read his book, I was in Madeira recently, and really? the speaker before me yeah. was talking about Ray Kroc and McDonald Systems. Fantastic. <clears throat> if you've not heard of Ray Kroc and you wonder why the hell are McDonald's so bloody good, read Ray Kroc's book, Grinding It Out. How he met the McDonald's brothers and said, hey, this is so brilliant, I can make this a worldwide brand. And he's a guy absolutely driven by passion and desire for excellence at every step of the way. Because whatever you think of McDonald's, whether you like their burgers or not, they're a bloody successful organisation. Okay? Here's Ron Raycock's most famous sayings. If you want extraordinary results, what do you want in this new world? Extraordinary results, would that be good? Anybody want extraordinary results? Don't look too keen. <laughs> you can have rubbish results if you want. It's up to you. If you want extraordinary results... From ordinary people. Who has ordinary people working for them, with them? Anybody else? Just me? <laughs> everybody, would that be fair? Everybody's ordinary and extraordinary, but everybody is just ordinary, aren't they? We're all ordinary. If you want extraordinary results from ordinary people, you need extraordinary systems. Okay? Going back to the question you started with, how do you make customer service training work? You need extraordinary systems. Okay? Systems are what makes it work. The training must work within a system. If it works outside a system, you just piss your people off. Yeah. So we've got this system, we've got this business that's running like this, and it's not quite right, and it's all a bit sort of hapsy-flapsy, but let's train people on customer service and make people smile more and answer the phone quicker. That'll do it, won't it? No. It'll just piss them off. Why don't you fix the phone system rather than training me on how to answer it? Yeah? It would be much better, wouldn't it? It's all about keeping calm and using common sense. Okay? And just go online, it's very good. It's the uh, Keep calm o -matic online. Brilliant. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> it's good fun. Okay? So, we need systems that are based on common sense. Would that be fair enough? If we're going back to communities where local, where global local communities, where reputation is everything... We need systems of common sense to help us. Okay. Before I show you that slide, I'm doing time -wise. oh, we're doing fine time-wise. That's good. Just keep seeing you. What? Look at your watch. I think. Oh my God! Am I talking too much? Yeah. <laughs> Normally I am. Right. Systems of common sense. Is everyone with me so far? Yeah. Any questions? Anything that I've said that people find inherently difficult to deal with or or unpleasant? Probably lots, I guess, but no. <laughs> Before we go into this, I just, should just tell you what, what sort of I have a, sort of always have a hidden agenda. We all have hidden agendas, all of us, all the time. We are all in it for us, in everything that we do. Let's be honest about it. My system, if you're a trainer, my system is available for you to be licensed in. Guess how much it's going to cost you? Nothing. Absolutely right. If you're a business, you want to use my system in your, in your business, we can do it for nothing as well. But you have to get, get, use us to, to provide feedback for you. Okay? Or we can train the system into your, bus into your trainers in your business and license them in your business to make it work for you. How much is that going to cost? Not very much. Okay? So, and the other, the other real issue I have with a lot of customer service training is it's expensive and doesn't get great results. Got to be systems. Okay. Right, systems. Systems have got to be based on common sense. I'm very surprised that Don asked me to speak, actually, because <laughs> I do say some, uh, some rather challenging things sometimes. But anyway, common sense. Common sense has got to be based on how people behave. Okay? And we behave in this way. We start off inside ourselves... With beliefs. Where do our beliefs come from? Environment. Environment. Parents. Parents. Education. Education, yeah. Anything else? 
Role models, yeah. Where do a lot of our role models come from today? Media. Media, yeah, massive, massive um, effect on people, doesn't it? Yeah. You just go to any newspaper stand and there's rows and rows of crap, yeah? Celebrity gossip and chat and crap and this sort of stuff. What are we, people, what are we doing to ourselves? This is total madness, yeah? Sorry, I have to apologise for my language, but it's so important, this stuff. Okay, so we all, end up, we all start with these beliefs that come from a mixture of places, would that be fair? We all have a different mixture, yeah? Everybody's totally different mixture. Our beliefs generate our thoughts, yeah? Our thoughts trigger our emotions, yeah? So if, I, if I, my belief is, hey, public speaking is worse than death, which is actually what a lot of people believe, what am I going to feel like when I come up to stand here? Worse than death. <laughs> and you're going to wish I was dead. <laughs> okay? So our beliefs trigger our thoughts, which trigger our emotions. Our emotions determine how we... How we... Behave. behave yeah. yeah. How we behave. Our actions. Our actions determine our... Results. Results. Perfect. What do we want to get better? Results. Okay. How do we... What is the problem with just doing customer service training? It focuses only on which one of those things, generally? Actions. actions. And how on earth are we going to do that if we just focus on actions, but we don't get our emotions under control, we don't get our thoughts under control, and we don't get our beliefs aligned? Okay? You can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And that is why. So we need a system that's based on aligning beliefs, thoughts, emotions, and actions that measures results and helps you get better ones. Okay? The other thing, the problem I have with, with, with this whole customer service sort of arena that, that sort of people get in is people so badly re measure results. You know, it costs a lot of money to get people trained on customer service. It costs a lot of money to do all this sort of stuff. Time, money, effort. Yet we don't measure output. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a government... I can't, I'm a government coach in, in, a, in something called Growth Accelerator. Do you know how they measure results in that? How much money they spend. Right? And what results have we had? Oh, we don't know about that. And that's how often governments measure their, their output, isn't it? How much money have we spent? Oh, we spent loads of millions. Must be good then. Uh, what results have we got? Oh, uh, we don't know. Don't ask me diff difficult questions. Yeah? We've got to get better than that. We've got to get smarter than that. The world is getting more and more competitive every day. Okay? We are rapidly becoming a third world country in this country. Anybody been on the roads recently? Any been on, anyone been on the roads in Kenya? They're pretty similar. Yeah? Our roads look like a third world country. That's a big indicator. We can't afford to repair them. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Okay? Richest country in the world 200 years ago. Today we can't even afford to repair our roads. Okay? Here is a system based on common sense. And if you've got the CD in front of you, um, it's there. If you like what I'm saying, there's a, a document here called What is Great or Poor and How Does It Work? This is called the Great or Poor System. Um, I also have two reports here, which if you give me your card, I will email to you. Well, I won't email it to you. My, my colleague Lizzie will email them to you. Called The Seven Deadly Sins of Service and The Seven Deadly Sins of Sales. And the biggest sin is not bringing them together. Because the whole point of service is to make more money. Okay? They're essentially the same document, just written with different words. <laughs> but it's, you should read them together, because they, they go together. All right? We start off with our beliefs. Incidentally, this is designed like a flywheel. Anybody here read a book called Good to Great by Jim Collins? Yeah? Pretty good? I think it's probably the, one of the best things I've ever read, apart from perhaps the seven habits of highly effective people. Good to Great is a study of companies that went from good to great and stayed there. They outperformed the stock market by 
three times, that's 300%, or more, for 15 years or more. Out of over 1,500 companies, there were 11 that did it. This is in the US. Okay? And what they said was, what did these companies do? What was in common with these companies? What did they do? Okay? And the key finding, there are six findings, but the key finding that brings them all together is they had a flywheel driving them, which means they had a systematic way of doing business that drove the business that didn't depend on personalities of leaders and the climate or whatever at the time. Okay? It was driven by beliefs driving systems. Okay? And this is what we're trying to achieve here, a systematic approach. We start off with our beliefs right at the hub of the flywheel. We call it CFM. CFM stands for Customer Focused Mission. Now, most businesses, the starting point they have is their beliefs, and the most businesses get this wrong. And then they get it wrong, and they then try and train their people in customer service, and the people say, get stuffed. Yeah? Most businesses believe they're in business to make money. They're not. <coughs> businesses are in business to do so, and I really want you to think about this and write this down. Businesses are not in business to make money. They are in business to do something so well that people want to give them their money, want to come back to them, want to buy more, want to tell their friends about them, and want to, to recommend them to all their mates. That's what they're in business for. If they do that, guess what will follow? The money. And the problem is when people have believed they're in business to make money, they think, mm, I don't think we'll invest in that phone system. Yeah, no, it's too expensive. And then all the people answering the phone get pissed off. Yeah, excuse my French. We were just talking about mobile phones. Had, a, had a, um, a, an email across this morning. 37% of all consumers in a recent survey are looking to change their mobile phone supplier. Okay. Why is that? Can't talk to anybody. Yeah? And, excuse me, you know, I know you're from, <laughs> from, from mobile, but how much money do mobile phone providers spend on their marketing? This is the old model, isn't it? Spend loads of money on marketing and cut your costs everywhere else. In the new world, that is going to propel you into disaster. Want an example? Comet. Want an example of someone doing it the other way? Richer Sounds. Anyone been to Richer Sounds? Bloody fantastic. Yeah? Have been to Richer Sounds? Go to Richer Sounds. Pick up one of their mugs and ask them how they do it. They're brilliant, okay? Start off with what I call a customer-focused mission. A customer-focused mission is what Tesco stuck to for 15 years until Sir Terry Leahy left. We are in business to earn a customer's lifetime loyalty. That is the Tesco mission, or was, until two years ago. How interesting that their results have started to waver since then. To earn a customer's lifetime loyalty. Anyone heard of Zappos? Yep. Their mission is to make people to deliver, sorry, to deliver happiness. What do they sell? Shoes. No, they deliver happiness. Okay? You've got to have something in your business that tells people what you're really about. And it's not about making money, it's about doing something so bloody fantastically that everyone wants to buy from you, come back to you, and tell everyone else about you. Simple as that. And you've then got to stick to it like glue. You deviate it from it once, and people will take you to the cleaners. Get it? That's why it's at the hub of the flywheel. That's your beliefs. You then go through to your thoughts and emotions. Your thoughts and emotions is your customers' real needs. Customers don't need your product or service. They want their life to be better. Don't need a solicitor. They want a result. Don't need a mobile phone. They want to speak to people. Don't need a train ticket. I want to get to my destination happily. Nobody needs your product or service. Your product or service is inherently valueless. The only thing they need is the emotional result it gives them. And that's a massive mindset shift. Not only for your behaviour, but more importantly for your systems. You have to design all of your systems and processes 
around delivering on the customer's emotional needs. Okay, so how do we do answer the telephone? We answer the telephone in a way that's going to make the customer happy, loyal, etc., etc. Yeah. So this is what this is what I call a, a, a compass for a business, and this is what I call a filter. Okay, and I, t I work with businesses to filter absolutely every system and process in their whole business through this filter. Three needs. Three. <laughs> Everyone wants their life to become easier. That's the number one emotional need. Nobody does anything to make their life harder. If you do, you're deranged. Number two is we want to feel like somebody cares. That's why not phoning back and not answering the phone is such an important thing. Yeah? And number three is we want to find people we trust. That's why Marks and Spencers were so profitable. Because people inherently trusted them. Okay? Those are your customers' real needs. Then, how do you make that happen? Those are your thoughts and emotions. You make it happen through your actions. And the action says, go the extra inch. Now, normally people talk about the extra mile. Not going to go into this, but an extra mile is far too far. It's demotivating. And frankly, again, a bit of French here, it's marketing bollocks. Yeah? One of my key personal goals in life is to see that phrase eradicated from people's vocabulary. Okay? It's the inch by the inch is a cinch. It's Japanese idea of Kaizen. How do you move your stuff through the customer's real needs, little by little? Why is the National Health Service always struggling? Because they have massive reorganizations, and nobody knows where they are all the time. We're going in this direction. Oh, my God, now we're going to go in this direction. And they've thrown the flywheel into reverse. Yeah? It's a nightmare. But, you know, politicians, hey, we're doing something. We're changing all this sort of stuff. Yes, this is great. You know, every four years, we'll throw this flywheel into reverse. And, and then everybody wonders why nobody gets anywhere. Yeah? By the inch, it's inch by inch. Number one, that's for your processes. Number two, it's for your behavior. How do you deal with this customer? You deal with them just a little tiny bit better than they would have expected you to. It's the tiny things that matter. Good example. I'll phone you back by the end of the day, you phone them back before lunch. Simple example. Okay? Um, and this, that last thing, is where your training comes in. So your training never, ever comes in before you get that, that, and this first bit of this in, in place. Until you've got those three in place, your training will just piss your horse off. Because the first three things are what will make your, customer, your horse thirsty. Okay with that? hope I'm helping here. <laughs> never mind. And lastly, measure. We want results. If we want results, we've got to have measures. Anyone heard of the net promoter score? Okay, doesn't work. <laughs> it does work if you do it properly 90% of people don't do it properly and I can say that quite openly because I'm a Franklin Covey consultant as well as doing my own stuff and Franklin Covey uh, use the Net Promoter score they are partners with Net Promoter most people get it wrong Okay. now Net Promoter score is great if you get it right but it has one fatal flaw it just measures your customer experience so the customers had a nice time Great. Why? What do we want from this customer having a nice time? What do we want? Where do we start? What do we want? Results. Results. We want more money. We want more sales. We want lower costs. And the biggest, biggest issue that most businesses have, number one, they don't have a good measure in place. Okay? That's, the, that's the main issue. Number two, their measure isn't designed to, to, to drive future sales. Your measure should be your, your, what I call the ultimate sales and marketing question. Okay, so if you want some information, it's all in these documents here. Give me an email, I'll, I'll get them sent to you. Okay? The, the measure should drive that next sale, should drive that cross-sale, should drive that referral, and should drive that reputation. Let me give you an example in practice. Okay? Because my next slide, I think, says, does it work? <laughs> I can say to you, no, it doesn't work. <laughs> But it does work. Yeah, it does it work. Okay? Give you an example. Uh, a hotel group I work with in the Southwest, when the client leaves, day after, they get a phone call from the hotel. They employ apprentices just to do this. Hi, it's Guy calling from the so and so hotel. It's just a courtesy call to find out how your stay was and see what we could have done any better. That's it. It's a courtesy call. 
It's not a survey. It's a courtesy call. Okay? And by the way, they warn them this is going to happen. If you don't warn them, then you're, you know, you, you're asking for trouble. The outcome of that is either they think you're great or they think you're poor. That's where the name of the business comes from. Great or poor. Okay? Because satisfactory is in effect poor. What are you going to do if you were satisfied with your hotel stay? Where are you going to stay next time? Somewhere else. So that's poor, isn't it? You've failed. Satisfactory equals poor. That's another phrase we want to get rid of. Customer satisfaction. Yeah? Oh, please don't give me customer satisfaction. Give me customer loyalty. Okay? Um, you're great or poor. If you're great... The, the phone call goes on, would you like to join our VIP club to get all of our special offers? Okay? They were advertising all their special offers. Guess where? Groupon, lastminute.com, all this old rubbish. Yeah, Just devaluing their brand. Daily Mail offers. Yeah? Why not I give, if, yes, of course there are going to be special offers. Hey, it's not very pleasant in Sidmouth in November. Yeah, It's not like August. Actually, it's quite nice in Sydney all year round, I have to say, but, you know. <laughs> um, yes, you're going to have special offers. Yes, you're going to have quiet times. Yes, you're going to have the times you want to move stock on or whatever. Give those to your loyal customers. Banks. Insurance companies. Insurance companies, you know, if you're a new customer, you can have 12 months for the price of 10. If you're a loyal customer, you can have 12 months for the price of 13. Great, thanks very much. Because well, we've got to, someone's got to pay for the, 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 those new customers, haven't they? Yeah, banks, you know, first year, get this wonderful new, new rate. Next year, oh, well, screw that, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's just mad. We are mad. The, the whole way of doing business is mad. You have to treat your existing customers better than your new ones. And guess what they'll do when you do that? They'll do your marketing for you. And then you make it easy for them. So then... If they're poor, by the way, in this hotel, they say, look, could a member of the management staff phone you up and sort it out with you? Okay, so they aim to stop customer defection as well. A member of the management staff phones within 24 hours. That blows them away. They didn't expect the call, did they? Okay, normally in a hotel, what you get? You get a poxy card in the room or some rubbishy survey monkey email when you've left or something like that. How does that make you feel when you get a survey monkey email? Feel valued? Someone sent you a survey monkey? No, it's cost them nothing. Does that make you feel valued? No. You just feel abused, don't you? You're just trying to get your, your time. Okay. The, the last thing is, when they're great, the last thing that this lady says is, thanks so much for your feedback. Sounds like we've done a great job. Would you, be a, would you mind reviewing us on TripAdvisor if we sent you the link to our page? Simple stuff. Help your, biz your, help your customers come back to you. Help them buy more from you and help them spread your reputation. And this is, there's a, that's a system for a hotel. There's a system that works for every business. You've just got to work it out. Okay? And you've got to have absolute integrity to your customer focus and mission and your customer's real needs. So I hope that's helped. Uh, we've got ten minutes for questions or seven minutes for questions. I have gone on a bit. Um, any questions? Any questions? <coughs> I'd say it's neither. I'd say it's systems. They don't know how to do this. If systems drive everything. If I might say, I think one of the problems is yeah. systems become, can become too systemized. Absolutely. So a great example of this, funny enough, last time we met we discussed this, yesterday was my wife's birthday. And being the kind of wonderful man that I am, I took her out for dinner. And we went to a very nice restaurant. I had a put down when I booked the table. I said, it's Mr. Howes. And the person said, oh, Mr. Daniel Howes. No, that's my son. <laughs> so my son's got a bigger reputation than I have locally already. 
But um, Wednesday, it was fine. It wasn't particularly good, lacking in atmosphere, but it was midweek. But they did the old thing. You're in the middle of the meal, and the woman comes later. It was the latest. I could have been a guy and says, you everything all right for you, sir? And they do it so mechanical, don't they? <laughs> you know she's not really interested. And it's actually disturbing you, because, you know, you're with your wife, and you maybe talk about something. Everything yeah. all right for you? And um, the restaurant is better than the, is everything all right for you? It really took the whole thing, da- the whole experience down, not up. Wrong systems. But restaurants do it all the time. Wrong systems. That's because they, they're used to doing it because someone's taught them to do it. Yeah. That's what's wrong with a lot of training, teaching people to do the wrong things. You need the right system. You've got a system that's driven by the customer-focused mission. We're not here to sell food and drink. We're here to make people happy. Okay, I, when I work with, with pubs, I get all of the staff wearing a picture of a smiley cat on their face, on their T-shirt. My job is to make you look like this when you leave. On the back, it says, if I have done, please tell all your friends and TripAdvisor. If I haven't done, please tell me. Okay, that's the mission. Okay, get the mission on people's shirts, number one. Um, get the mission right. Filter all your processes through the customer's real needs. Does the customer want someone to lamely come over and say, is everything all right with your meal? That process hasn't been filtered through the customer's real needs, has it? It's just been done without thought. So systems driven through the right beliefs and the right process is what produce the results, okay? And by the way, you don't want the meal to be all right. Okay, just a little thing there. You don't want the meal to be all right. You want the meal to be bloody fantastic, yeah? Little in- in- instance in shops, um, and this, isn't, this is something we did at Fra- Franklin Covey, we changed the welcome in a, in a group of shops. One, there was one group and one control group for, all f- from, can I help you? Okay, what happens, what's the answer to that? No, thanks, I'm just looking. Yeah. To, have you been here before? Change that, those words, sales went up 17%. Simple stuff, just got to think about it. Okay? And, if, and that wasn't, you know, that wasn't trained into them, that was them, came up with that, their, that, that phrase, but being trained, hold on a second, what are we really about here? Yeah. Any thought, any other questions? Thoughts on that? And I've done some work in a hotel. And it came about because a customer came to the counter and the person said, "Was everything all right with the next meal, sir?" And he said, uh, "Well, actually, no. The, uh, the fish was rubbish." And the guy behind the counter and said, "No, actually, no. I had the fish and sweet. It was rubbish then." <laughs> now, you start to think about that, and actually, that lad was a really good lad because what he was trying to do was empathise. Yes. He was actually trying to connect with the customer. But the, the organisation had not given him anywhere to go. Mm. The system, you know, they'd given him, this is what you're supposed to do, mm-hmm. but they hadn't given him, if this happens, this is how we would like to respond. This is what you're able to do. Have a coffee, have a dessert, how we make that right for you. Yeah. So we've done the first bit, which is the banal, smiley, customer mm-hmm. service bit, but we've not, behind the scenes, actually given him the solutions to put that customer back on. Yeah. And I think so from that point of view, I think we've pulled it through the system stuff. Is system. So important. Systems and beliefs. And I would say to you also, from what you said, he's not been taught the difference between sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is agreeing. Empathy is understanding. Yeah. Totally and, different. And, and, but sympathy but is, yes, the fish is rubbish. Empathy is, I'm sorry to hear that you're upset. It's totally different. I think he was trying to connect. You know, yeah. Was, you know, but no one had to- told him that. Than because yeah. Him. And then, he doesn't, want to be, doesn't need to be told what you can do. Well, for this, you can give a free dessert. He needs to be said, what's your mission? Oh, to make people happy. Right. What are you going to do about it? If it's your money, what would you do? Yeah, That's the only thing you need to know. You don't need to be trained on what to do in that case. People are intelligent enough to make their own minds up if you do it properly. And you use the go the extra inch process, which is a, a weekly ongoing process, to continually review. Well, what went wrong last week? How do we deal with it? How are we going to move it forward an inch this week? Yeah. What went right last week? Picking up, you know, wow awards. What went right last week? How are we going to do more of it? How can we all do it? Yes, those are two go the extra inch processes that I put into every business. Okay, but it's a great question, absolutely. And people feel, um, you know, they just they're trained to do something and they just feel sort of, oh, what do I do? And they get it wrong. You know, they're trying to get it right, but they get it wrong. Yeah. Can I have time for one more? Yeah. Well, I have. I've got time for as many as you like. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I get the whole concept. Um, I, I really get it. I understand it. Um, I agree with the majority of what you've just said. I think what I'm asking is, how do you get the momentum 
and sustain that momentum for change. So you're talking about putting a system in place. What, what do you have for sustainability? Um, two, two answers to that question. The, the, the sort of um, anecdotal answer is think of a flywheel. Okay? Your first push gets it moving just a tiny bit. Then your next push gets it moving a bit faster. Then your next push gets it moving faster and faster and faster and faster. And if you're familiar with the good to great concept, it's all about little continual pushes on the flywheel. Okay, so that's number one. So it's always a slow start, but you just it just starts moving, starts moving, starts moving. Okay, number one. Number two is continual ongoing feedback using the measure. Okay, and I don't mean customer satisfaction surveys. I mean you phone everybody up. Okay. And we run a service to do this for businesses, and we also train it into businesses to do it themselves. And we work with businesses, they do some themselves, and we do quality control on their calls and things for them as well. So continual customer engagement, and see it as a marketing spend, not a service spend. Because it is a marketing spend, because we, which results do we want from it? Profit. More profits. That's marketing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a marketing spend, yeah? And people suddenly, when, you, when I say this to them, say, Customer feedback is all about marketing. They suddenly go, hallelujah, thank you so much, you've opened up budgets. Because when you say to people, actually, you need to have someone phoning your customers up on a regular basis, continually, 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 and then using the go the extra inch process, which is a weekly process, it's the weekly push on the flywheel, okay? So you'll have to read my book to find out how that works. It's a weekly push on the flywheel, okay? Um, when you put that in, in place, and you say to people, this is all about marketing and sales building, rather than just being nice, they all go hallelujah. Because there's no budget to employ someone to phone people up. Of course there isn't. It's a total waste of money. If you don't link it to results. Okay, and that's why customer service gets so poorly funded. Because the finance director says, well, we're not employing someone else to phone anybody. You know, that's an extra person on the payroll. We can't afford that. No, we'll cut that. Yeah? not going to happen. You say, actually, this is the most the ultimate sales and marketing process you can adopt in your business. And they go, thank you very much. It's just, yeah, we, we can do a bit more sales and marketing. We can always do that. That help? <laughs> so a number of answers. Does that, I, I, I hope that helps a bit. Uh, yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay. Guy, you'll be around for a while, will you? Yeah, I've got to leave after lunch. I'm really okay. sorry. Okay. Well, so Guy yeah. will be around. In, we're going to break for coffee now. And Guy will be around then. He'll be around for lunch. So... I'd like to thank you very much, Guy. Really interesting presentation. Well, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. A lot of thoughts and controversy there as well. <laughs> I'm sure people will want to talk to you about some of those things. And um, we look forward to you judging the awards later on. Thank you.